This might get weird. Are we rolling? We're rolling. Well, then cheers, Grace Helbig. Cheers, my very heart. You guys, welcome back to another episode of This Might Get Real. And another um, episode of Where in the World is Mamrie Hart Today? <laughs> I mean, it is very true. It is very true. It's so yeah. funny. I was talking, uh, there was like a business person I needed to be in touch with. I know that sounds incredibly vague. Yes, um, nice. But I needed like notes on something. And I remember saying to someone, well, based on their Instagram, they're always on vacation. And our manager, Vincent, was like, based on your Instagram, you're always Yeah. So- Have you looked at your own Instagram? <laughs> you just I was did like, a- how dare she? You just did a reels for the hotel you were in down in Palm Springs. <laughs> Look, you had to get a free couple of nights. It was hey, a great time. But our house it. is booked and busy. Okay. Love it. Um, I love it too. I'm in Napa. Gorgeous, gorgeous Napa, mm-hmm. the which feels appropriate. Maybe as we get to the Bachelor, it feels Ooh. like a romantic setting. But it is. Uh, we have a lot to talk about this week, as always. I like we try to cram. Like I was just trying to read what was happening in these episodes because I have notes, but they are like my brain scattered. Yes. So if you like to hear about reality TV and also want it to be nonsensical, like there's so many, I'm sure reality TV podcasts that yeah. are so structured. Yeah. And this truly is stream of consciousness jumping yep. around. We're flipping channels. Yeah. You're in a real conversation with two people yeah. trying to remember what they watched. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, let's get into it as we have been doing recently, which yes. is starting with Drag Race because we are, a, you know, a week late to the recap and uh, we're barely hanging on to memory of the episode. This was a bittersweet episode. I know. Our precious, know. precious Dawn uh, is gone. And Dawn, Dawn is gone into day. Yeah, There's- I did love it when uh, I forget who it was called her out in boy drag and said her name would be Dusk. And I was like, that's great. Excellent. Honestly, it's perfect from dawn till dusk. Like yeah. that needs to be the one person show and go yeah. get it. No, we absolutely love Dawn. Dawn has been uh, very vocally sweet about us and and being a uh, friend of know, the a- pod. A f- there we go. <laughs> yeah. A fop. A total fop. <laughs> um, but let's get into this. The challenge was... Ba- bathroom hunties bathroom hunties well first okay there's a little bit of drama up top where q is telling safira that her win is undeserved i think i repressed that yeah i was going back looking at like what twitter was saying which obviously everyone's like (gasps) pearls clutched myself included um especially because she like doubled down on the word undeserved undeserved Mm -hmm. i don't think is a word anyone should use to anyone in this competition because i can't imagine how much they're working their asses off at every single challenge i get that you're upset that you didn't win but to say someone's win is undeserved is just like so pointed at them and it, rather than like the panel of judges that decided it for or against Ex- you exactly that like the only thing undeserved was Saphir being treated like that and also like how many times have we had someone get a win and then someone says something and the big thing is like you're I mean like I know Safira has won a few times but like not only are you hurting someone's feelings by saying it's undeserved but also like They get this one little moment of that like high of coming off a win that you just kind of like took like pulled out from under them, you know? Yeah. Not only is it karmically bad for uh, your own energy in the competition, but the one thing that we that I do believe is undeserved is Safira's absolute grace towards Q in this situation. Because the quote when Safira like at the mirrors later in the episode is like I gotta talk to her about this because this did rub me the wrong way. Safira is mother, just yes. period. But she said, and I wrote this down: one word can be the difference between getting your point across and hurting someone's feelings. Aww. And I like stood up. I got chills right now I thinking did, about I that. Did, I, did, I, just did, I was like, too. what a beautiful way to say this specific thing to Q and to also give an entire lesson to the entire watching public. Like, Safira mm-hmm. is, uh, not to sound like a uh, Gen Z Twitter, but Safira is mother. <laughs> like, truly Absolutely. embodies that maternal nurturing, doesn't go tit for tat, like, takes the high road, 
and also like comes from a place of trying to understand the other person, which mm-hmm. like that's rare for people Very to be that rare. compassionate. Two things. Yeah. One, um, I just thought of maybe uh, their one person show is Safira in the Mirror. <laughs> Just take take <laughs> that feels take, like her early nineties Nickelodeon show. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, no, but also it's exactly that. Her, her even saying that that line, I was like, is that a known thing to say, or right. did she come up with that? You know, it bothering her because it's true. It's like maybe Q didn't have ill intentions towards Safira. Right. And, you know, maybe it really was like oh, I think the judges just really like you more than me, uh, yeah. whatever it is. But but the delivery, man. Like, I was I was turning down the volume on my TV because yeah. I felt like two friends were fighting in front of me. Yeah. And you know what I mean? Like, I wanted yeah. to pull Q aside. So I'm glad they worked through it in, like, an adult way. But, yes, there were a lot of people on Twitter that was like, uh, if I was Safira, mm-hmm. I would have snatched mm-hmm. another bad wig off of Q. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, yeah, no, she was so uh, respectful, which was in incredible. I mean, she's just a class act top to bottom. Um, totally. Speaking of classy, their challenge. Speaking uh, of bottoms. Bath- uh, bottoms. <laughs> bathroom hunties. What a fun, dumb challenge. I love the challenge. I will say I was watching this episode with my friend Steven Soren. And yeah. yes, I smoked a little weed, which I rarely do. Welcome. But I laughed so hard because as not HGTV um, watchers, Soren was like, what is the, what is this a play on? Is, <laughs> and then, and then I said it and then it was like the lack of pun. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I get hunties, hunters, yeah, but it yeah. was like, this is a fucking stretch guys. Yeah. Yeah. This is, um, and if you don't watch HGTV, it is, yeah, a bit of like, what the fuck are we doing? Just mm-hmm. making up a bathroom and then like having fun showing it off. Which, I always, I always yeah. get all so awkward too. Sorry to interrupt, but like oh. when they, so it's not only that it was awkward. Yeah, it could have been awkward enough if the camera just came in and you did it crib style, talking yeah. to the camera. But we also have Michelle and Carson playing characters i know it's like oh no i didn't realize that this was going to be an improv game for yes. like 20 minutes like that is so this is the seemingly a fun dumb challenge but this is hard as shit because they yeah. are designing a room designing a concept designing characters playing to the judges as these characters which then you're also hoping that the judges play off of you well enough that you can showcase whatever character you have right like what if you're just not what if you're in it doing your thing and first of all you're combating against michelle and carson's character work but also what if you're like i don't get this like berlin couple yeah it, they made it harder than it needed to be by adding in that element. They could, yeah. they should have absolutely have been like, hey, welcome to my bathroom, hunty. Let yeah. me show you around. They did not need that extraness. And that made me cringe worse than the the Queen's performances. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't really because I know in previous seasons there was the challenge of designing like a club. And yes. it was like, let me show you like Club 69 or what, what was that? Was that oh, what it yeah. was? <laughs> Oh, yeah but that was good it was so good but i give them all a lot of credit because i mean at this point in the competition they've got to be fried in their brains anyway and so then to be paired off in duos and to basically design an entire room and then do an improv scene inside of it is here's wild. what i'll here's what i'll say though yeah i okay i thought the arts the museum of modern fart was super fun you know um, I, that was a great way to do it the we speakeasy- love a fart soundboard <laughs> We you love know. it. Oh, we love it. Um, I obviously the speakeasy made total sense, which is hilarious. Yeah. But the hell of it all, while it could have been funny, okay, yeah. this is morphine and Q. Mm-hmm. The two things I thought watching it is why are we doing Valley Girl impressions? Like, yeah. like the go to of I don't know how to do characters is well, I'll just do vocal fry. Yeah, and they called that out. I think I'm so over it. Yeah. But two, there were a couple of visual gags in that bathroom, like not being able to reach the toilet paper that yeah. I thought these two hosts didn't think of that. 
I a producer thought of that because that's <laughs> hilarious. And yes. I haven't seen either of these two be that witty. And call me out if I'm wrong. But I saw that and I went, oh, OK, the girls are fried. So the producers were like, maybe this would be a funny joke. Yeah, I honestly I don't know, because I feel like if producers get involved, that's murky territory since it is like a legal competition program. Um, I don't know. But I will say their concept of hell at first, I was like. I don't get it. Like when they were just spitballing and then as they were designing, I was like, oh, that's really fun. Because in my mind, mm -hmm. I was like, surely it needs to be a functional bathroom. <laughs> like, oh, Grace, like, you're thinking oh. of it so analytically. <laughs> Literally. And then I was like, oh, no, it can be whatever they fucking want. Um, yeah. I was surprised to see Nymphia steamroll so hard. I was unreal. She's more reserved or has been classically. I wonder if because the Jane good all of it all was so, um, you know, such a miss that she was like, I'm going to make sure I'm a character this time. I hear you. But again, I don't know if it's the edit, but they definitely gave Nymphia the edit of when we're coming yes. up on this, where our, our our poor sweet Dawn was having to be like, what about this? What about right. this? What about this? And and, you know, insert. Yeah rattlesnake noise where Nymphia either didn't get it or hated it and then when we get into the challenge she just takes over and yeah. a lot of people are like well they shouldn't have Dawn shouldn't have let her steamroll her guys like as someone who it gets called out on interrupting quite a bit like there's only so much you can get in there before it flips and it's like oh you weren't sticking up for yourself you yeah. were you were rude yeah and they weren't you know? like playing a bit to get like they didn't it seemed like they got they ran out of time and now they're filming. So they're like, we'll just go with it and whatever comes out, which I think, unfortunately for them, it was they designed these like literal artsy fartsy characters. And then you have Carson and Michelle coming in also yes. artsy characters that I was like, oh, this is a I, I didn't wonder like should Carson and Michelle switch their characters up? So they're like, I wanted them to be more like, you know, the small town like locals mm -hmm. that are looking for an interesting bathroom and they're like fixer upper. That is such a good point. It was like two in it. It's like if they had come as goth, then like right. the hell experience would have been like a different. Yeah. Like like going back and forth. But all in all, I mean, the bathrooms looked cool. Uh, I think whoever is with Safira. Uh, is going to be made to look good. I'm and sorry. They Plain. they just have good energy together and they were having fun. Like that yeah. was the thing of like you know, we come from sketch and improv comedy that like when you're in a flow state of trying to make the person on your team laugh, like that's when you're kind of in a sweet spot of like untouchable playfulness. Mm -hmm. And I felt like they were just having a fun time discovering all this dumb shit of like here's some booze oh i got her name wrong again like they were discovering bits maybe that i mean well they were felt in real time but yeah. like part of it but it felt still like light and maybe maybe yeah. it was a pre-planned bit but then they like added a little bit of improv yeah. at the end which i've noticed both of them are pretty good at so yeah overall um and then we went to the runway which was chains chain yeah what was it called uh what was it? chain reaction well, once again, Safira had the world's biggest outfit. <laughs> the, and also, <laughs> I have all caps, this Safira dog outfit, what? That well, was like, I, Safira is giving range. She's yes. giving dumb creativity. She's uh, giving inflatable dresses. She's giving, I had to pay extra for my luggage because it was over the weight limit. <laughs> oh, Safira rented a tractor trailer. Yeah, this is, I mean, and you know what? At this point, I don't care if that's illegal. I want to see all these parade floats. These are amazing. <laughs> yes, I would rather have less less rules of what the girls can bring. I mean, yeah. I say that while granted, I've also said, I feel like they should have a season where there is a price limit oh, yeah, on yeah. stuff just to see, you know, just to kind of like even the playing field. That's what but Formula One does. There we go. <laughs> and if I've said it before, I'll say it again. Drag race is exactly like Formula One. It's literally drag racing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Um, so uh -huh. I liked... I don't know what a drag race is, uh, like an actual yeah. <laughs> drag race. Um, but so I liked Morphine's outfit. I Loved mean, it. you know, lots of chains. It's it's a look that I feel like has been done, but at least yeah. like 
brought the chains. I thought some of the other ones, it was like, all right. I mean, Dawn, love you to pieces, but we just did the chains in front of the face yeah. for the 80s um, drag con. Oh, so true, I wanted yeah. that to be mixed up. I felt like that was a repeat kind of like and it's shared hard. DNA. Yeah. And it's hard to, I think, when you're going for much smaller detail and you have someone like Safira walk the runway and then someone like Dawn, whose outfit is still great, but by comparison, you're like, this looks like all she did was put a body chain on and Safira yeah. came out in like full latex Dalmatian outfit <laughs> with totally. a, a fire hydrant prop. So I I mean, it. I love Dawn's aesthetic. It works for her. I feel like she uh, can go out with no regrets. You know, yeah. there wasn't a huge faux pas. The biggest you know unfortunate event was that body was the lip sync song and morphine won within like 0.4 seconds of it starting <laughs> oh i mean for your life okay morphine won i mean immediately it was, you- oh god i was like as someone who obviously as a, a soulless white girl in a, in a certain way that relates to dawn unfortunately i was like this is not this it's is never going to happen. This is not you. Yeah, you could pull out every prop, everything I've never seen before. Uh, but Morphine is literally embodying this song. Well, Morphine looked like Morphine has performed this song on yes. stage like yeah, several yeah. times. And why wouldn't you? And uh, and just absolutely crushed it. And poor Dawn also like the outfit. Not that we know Dawn's a big dancer, but like the outfit itself was restricting yeah it was just a whole vibe so it definitely deserved morphine deserved to stay in that moment since it does come down to to that yeah but i will miss our little pixie elf eared dawn sweet baby dawn she'll be and now all we right can hang with, and now we can hang with dawn now that now she's we can the have show. her as a guest <laughs> and ask for the real tea but yeah Give she didn't stand me. a chance poor thing and wouldn't that be kind of a relief to go out that way of being yeah. like Probably not. She probably wanted to actually go out I, doing a, I, great, a great job. Yeah, no, you want to go out when it's like, oh, my God, they both killed it. And yeah. they both kind of like blew kisses at each other. Yeah. But you either want to like demolish your competitor or be like, we're good girl. Look how yeah. talented we both are. It's up to the in the judge's hand. So oh, anyway. anyway, I'll miss Dawn's um, talking heads too because i think she gave yes. good sassy commentary she did um the donesty will be missed we'll see who picks Ooh. up okay let's step. continue on because we're always like we'll talk before we yeah. start we're always like we'll talk about drag race for like five minutes and here I we know. are 20 minutes in okay let's get into survivor Woo-woo. yeah wow we finally um, had an episode that was not dominated by the yanu tribe completely yes oh my god i have never been more relieved Mm -hmm. to see a team win they got second place in the challenge and they finally got their flint because truly when they were you know letting us know up top that it's been 10 days without fire that would break me that would psychologically break me and i'd be on teetering on an edge that would be dangerous for long-term psychological danger yes being (laughs) cold for that long and even them voicing like I'm just the food is great but I'm just so excited to wake up not cold tomorrow like yeah I don't walk around my house without socks like yeah. I hate feeling cold and then also too it's like there's no relief it's not like well I'm cold but like I'll go take a hot shower later yeah. you know like like when you get that level of cold yeah it's like in your skeleton and there's no way to warm up so uh. I was so relieved I think producers were quite relieved yeah and and editors because i've never seen a slow-mo on survivor like they did that slow-mo i know the opening credits are (laughs) slow-mo but when they were going to shoot and it was going through the air that last beanbag i was truly like wait i'm taken out of it i've never seen them do slow-mo like this before this is epic yeah there were some editing choices that felt like Oh, they're trying to make some stuff happen here. Let us mm-hmm. know how important this moment actually is. I was so relieved for them. I was also nervous. I was nervous the whole time. Okay, three people, one person from each tribe went on a journey. We have Hunter, yes. who is the, the the best guy on the island. Let's be honest. Like he's I mean, skilled, dominating he's all of the physical challenges. Yeah. Yep. 
we have Tim, who was on uh, the the other tribe, who's the dad. Yes. And then we had uh, and then we had Q, right? Yeah. So they go on this journey. Okay, as they're forming their own alliance, which I think was very smart of them. Of Q, yeah, Q threw that out, and I was I was curious because I was like, is this good play? Are we gonna get a talking head of someone being like? That's the dumbest plan ever. But I think it was a good plan because it's not because they all showed up there and were like, oh, we're all strong in challenges. Yeah. You know, if you'd gone and you'd been like, oh, and and Mor- Moriah is here who, who's <laughs> yeah. breaking out from coconuts. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Uh, <laughs> then like maybe we don't make this. But I think they were like, oh, right now, let's yeah. fucking ride. And also, too, in a nice way where it wasn't like, oh, and this technically becomes a dude alliance because we're all going to bring guys right. like they their right. persons are uh women but anyway the whole time that q was on that journey all i kept thinking was what if they don't save him any pastries <laughs> like, that's, all, same that's thought. all i was worried same, about <laughs> same exact thought when they went back to what's her face and tiffany eating the pastries i was like yeah. they got, those girls gotta slow down i was like those are some big bites yeah, q hasn't did, had any did they i mean shouldn't they have waited for him to get back from his journey i was bothered and then when he showed up and they said we've saved you one third i was like are they telling the truth how would he know that this is one third of it he hasn't seen the whole yeah supply oh, see i was so <laughs> relieved i was so nervous that they were gonna like mindlessly eat and be excited in my head yeah. i was going okay do the producers have a separate prize for him right when he gets yes. back? like like that's all i was th- all i was hey. thinking about was if Q doesn't get some of that croissant. I know, I know, same. I was so, because I would be like, oh, I'll go on this journey. Hand me a third of that right. bounty right now and I'll eat it on the boat. That to me is one of the craziest parts of this show is that these starving people get awarded this absolutely picturesque pile of whatever food it is. Mm-hmm. And then they have to like wait until they're allowed to actually eat it or it gets like brought to their camp and they can't just eat it on the spot which is oh, yeah. wild i also just realized that maybe q's plan is actually really smart because by saying like hey bring your plus one to the merge he made them all out who is their strongest alliance oh, wow so now he knows who everyone else is working with but they all know so it's like equal knowledge so it doesn't feel like it's interesting yeah that Good is job, q Wow, I didn't even think about it like that. That already going in, he knows four people or whatnot. Uh, well, wow. that's because because Banu spilled his guts the week before. Dude, Banu, <laughs> which we didn't even fully process. Like when I saw the last time on Survivor or whatever. Yeah, Banu crying to the gods. Yeah, he blamed for- God. I mean, he and God had their own storyline last episode that was truly cinematic. I mean, Banu acted like tribal was an actual, like they were choosing who to decapitate. Yeah, yeah. I said to Chip, I was like, not you're being kicked off a television show before you stole a million hearts. Yeah. (laughs) Million hearts. (laughs) Stole a million hearts. Okay, let's talk about, besides, uh, my favorite thing of the episode was obviously during the challenge when Jeff was just firing off. I wrote, dead last, a familiar spot. (laughs) <laughs> Yano is dead last again, which is a common story. Like the level yeah. to which Jeff just doesn't give a Jeff fuck is, is amazing. Jeff is dragging them. I mean, a way to kick them when they're down. Like mm-hmm. they're literally starving Jeff. <laughs> um, but with the challenges, when they go on the journey and it becomes survivor, fanatic, whatever, with the logos, putting the logos yeah, in order. Yeah, Hunter, yeah. I hated this challenge and here's why. Yeah. Because I feel like a challenge like that, first of all, they sh- I think that should have been presented before you send them on a journey. So I feel like Jeff mm. should have been like, who here has the most survival survivor knowledge in this crew and then yeah. send them. But then also, I don't like it because I feel like it almost discourages people who aren't survivor fanatics to sign right. up they are they're yeah they're playing into the survivor super fan quality of their contestants right now which i don't love however i was in my mind you know because hunter's been so excellent at everything i was like he's gonna nail this within four seconds so to mm. see him not get it was like okay he's human albeit yeah. in the weirdest competition <laughs> ever that i do think like a lot of other contestants would have gotten correct i 
don't know shit about that. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I can't I can't keep up at all. So I thought that was an incredibly hard challenge. I'm sure yeah. Hunter was like, oh, I just wanted to balance on something. <laughs> or, yeah. You know, like, yeah. Can this- I just throw this big ball on that tiny like uh, plate over there? Right now, I think people are going to really start getting into making that part of their survivor super fan um training is like yeah. making sure you know they all know of the things i obviously fast forwarded through it because it was just chock full of spoilers and i would like him Wait, we'll go fast- oh oh him going actually putting them in order because it was just like and i know that so and so won on this season before she and i was like oh. this is just spoilers because i want to go back and actually watch those seasons right 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 so i fast forwarded through it but i want to get to the juiciest part of this whole episode which mm-hmm. is Jem absolutely shooting herself in the fucking foot. <laughs> I can feel okay. Well, the uh, first of all, the episode opened up too with them getting a salsa lesson. I just want to point out that mm-hmm. when Charlie Charlie said, um, "I can dance without even having to drink some dirty Shirley Temples." Yep. Okay, I just needed to say that because that was on my. I guess uh, Shirley thing. Temples with vodka in it. That's what I guess, but of course okay. the Taylor Swift super fan. That's his drink of choice is a dirty Shirley Temple. No shade. I've just never heard of it before. It sounds delicious. Jem from the beginning of the episode, from last week's episode, I was like, I kept telling Elliot, I gotta see what Twitter says about this because is mm-hmm. this behavior fun and entertaining or is this like? insane and like kind of like uh i don't even know the word for it again i feel like it was unnecessary in her, in her head it was i'm gonna make a play and in yes. my head i'm like well this is a bad play because you could just outright have an idol and no one is suspicious of you so why right. did you redo that why did you do this was it to make them tired to fuck with them or to cause doubt and make them think someone else did this. Like what right. what was the end goal? Because you could have just secretly had that idol without she, any suspicion. She kept saying in her talking heads that she was having fun. It seemed to be that this was like for entertainment value and also to take the heat off of her potentially having an idol. But it just like went on for so long that yeah. I was like, this now just seems like a bit cruel and like even if you have the best season and this vibes tribe right if i was watching this back i'd be like holy shit Mm -hmm. (laughs) like i know we're all lying to each other but like what immediately i Uh, I just don't think that level of deceit needs to happen until you make the merge yeah because like people are playing hard and fast so quickly yeah it's it's absolutely right now like your team should be your alliance, like unless you're on the chopping block, which they quickly were. Yeah. And it absolutely shot her in the foot. What I will say is since we finally got to hear other teams talk yeah. or other tribes talk this week without Yanu taking over, I do think Tim, who went on the journey, who's a dad, who yeah. uh, has an alliance with Maria, him going like, it's this, it's her. Yeah, he's, him he's and him saying her to out. her, so when are you going to tell me about you having the beware advantage? I was like, oh, here we mm-hmm. go. So he sniffed her out. Yeah. So I immediately was like, you're good. And then I automatically felt a kindred kin- kinship yeah. to him because he was like, I haven't pooped in 10 days. <laughs> yeah, that's I, I was like, my man. <laughs> but don't they? I thought that they remove contestants if they haven't pooped for a certain amount of time because it becomes like an actual medical issue but they seemed lighthearted there was lighthearted music behind it so i was like okay this isn't gonna be traumatic i okay i do love ben the music guy i'm obsessed with him yeah it took me a while to warm up and now Same. i'm very protective over him him holding the hammer while jem had a machete <laughs> and the two of them having a conversation but him starting the conversation by going look i'm like a judge with a gavel and jumps up and hits a tree <laughs> He was making the fact that he had a potential weapon known. He absolutely, I think he's fantastic. I again was like, oh no, corny guy, rocker guy, whatnot. But Charlie was correct in describing him as, and I quote, a charisma rock and roll shield. Yeah, yeah. He's charismatic. He's rock and roll. I mean, what was her... It was it Mariah? Mariah? Yes, Mariah. I think is in love with Ben. She oh okay. She called him quote 
the most enjoyable person I've ever met in my entire life. Yes, I was yes. like, whoa, whoa, whoa. It keeps going. It keeps going, that compliment. But he is, he is like so genuine yeah like it took me a while to believe how genuine he seemed i was like is this a bit or is this a caricature right. but it's like the guy from last season whose name i'm forgetting that went whoa sorry whoa like oh <laughs> uh, what was his name that he spoke like a boston like uh um, oh the lawyer yeah he <laughs> lawyer. was so he was so great anyway he him. reminds me of him i'm very protective over ben i was hoping that there because i was like there's no everyone seems to be in a female alliance, which female alliances never work on this show. Right. Ever. So when Maria, the mother woman, mm -hmm. uh, when she and Charlie were talking about like, now's the time that we could flip on her. I was like, truly not. I was like, Ben's going home. This is going to be upsetting. Ben's going to go home. There's no way I don't see any of them sniffing her out. But she just got like, it seemed like she spiraled more and more yeah. before uh tribal happened because that's they've been 10 days without going to tribals they haven't even gotten yeah. to play the game so they've, it's like all of a sudden their blue balls time. are like yeah. what and they're like they've hung out longer yeah. than like people go to camp and become yeah. best friends you know and that's without the bonding of like how tough it is out there i was curious because you know maria does have that alliance with charlie but also had it with the women but then when tim went on the journey he was like my girl is maria so oh, yeah. you know what i mean where he was like we're the two parents so i was like oh okay this is her moment to flip and yeah. like She's clearly well liked by the guys. Not that yeah. it needs to be just gender alliances, but I was like, this one's a loose cannon. Yeah. And if I had a shred of doubt that someone made me do manual labor when I'm rocking zero calories three to days. burn, yeah. fuck you. Like I'm, <laughs> I might have gotten physical. <laughs> but that's what I was like, I feel like they're editing around this because they didn't really show us everyone catching on to the fact. But she left pissed. She didn't say goodbye. She didn't say, yeah, yeah, she didn't. At least that's what I remember, unless I missed it. Because as soon as someone gets voted off, I like furiously go to Twitter to be like, what's everyone saying about this? I know. But you know what I wish? Hmm. I wish just for I know they can't do it, but I wish for the sake of especially in this one when they dug forever to find nothing. Yeah, I wish when someone leaves. They have they show like what they're actually leaving with. I wish that too. So they I could be that. like, so you did lie, and guess what, guys? There's gonna be an idol hidden tonight. You know what I mean? Right, like, right. So now they don't know, know if the idol is being put back into play or anything. So I really feel like Survivor found its rhythm this week and felt like Survivor and not just yeah. like the Banu show. Well, we got to finally see the other teams. We know mm -hmm. next week the merge happens, so we're oh, yeah. already we're already there without even really no getting to know the other team. I guess <laughs> Hunter's team. So we'll get to meet the cast. I know, next like week. the first week we knew so much about Soda and her Christmas hams, yeah. and and now it's like we haven't heard her talk in nope. three weeks. I four know. Weeks. Okay, speaking of not talking, at least to each other, let's talk about Vanderpump Rules super fast, and then we'll get into the Bachelor finale. Oh, right. Yeah, Vanderpump Rules is just like... Not ruling. It's not ruling, except this episode, the end with Katie sleeping with Schwartz's best friend, got a little like, oh, here we go. Here's the new drama. Because oh, everything yeah. else just feels like, ugh. That Tom is doing some other weird metaphysical fucking spiritual bullshit I, thing on I camera. Hate I, hate and <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. And this is from a person that did a master's degree in yeah. depth psychology and creativity. That stuff is powerful and legit. But the way I watch it on this program is like, oh, man, this is so soulless and stupid. It, it was so stupid. And also, it's like, I don't care if this was a brand deal. Like, yeah. you cannot put me on national television doing that, like, what sounded like horny trauma yeah like the breath work yeah. the shallow breath the convulsing like yeah. ugh, i hated it i hate this newfound friendship between lala and sandoval i'll say it right now yeah. um the sheena and schwartz of it all <laughs> how does sheena have everyone's locations 
what is going on with that? Do people do that as adults? Is that something that people do? My here's husband doesn't even have my location. <laughs> well, here's what's so crazy. I sh I recently shared mine with Chip just when it was like updating sure. phone and being like, oh, make sure red receipts are on. Like things like yeah. that where it's like, I care about you. And then I also have Jacqueline's and it was something from like a, you know, travel abroad being yeah. like, well, come meet us. But like, turn on your location in case something crazy yeah. happens. But, to, but she fully has everyone she's ever known i'm like are you going into their phone and turning it on because that's not something you can activate i think they have to people, activate it i think people will share their locations and then they'll forget that she has it but she's so, clearly checking it to find your tea so like if she has your location with that it was like and i went to look to see if you got home uh, to see if he got yeah. home i'm like why are you checking to see if tom's best friend got home okay because she's on a reality program. I don't know. It's, I mean, and she wasn't going to bring it. Uh, uh, Brock, just putting it out there is great. Him being like, Sheena, I'm done with you trying to like censor what I can and can't say on this show that's supposed to be transparent. I'm kind of uh, team Brock at the moment. Yeah, he seems like he's just like trying. He seems the most genuine. I did love, though, at the very end of this episode of Lala being like, Everyone here is moving weird. And I'm like, did you just wake up from the fever dream that's been paying you for years? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, this yeah. is what your show is. Mm -hmm. Every, it is this bizarro, incestuous group of, like, uh, people in Hollywood mm -hmm. searching for something. And it continues. Like, it's not like it was a phase. I love that they're all like us growing up and being like what is my relationship to alcohol what is my idea of god but i'm still gonna get drunk and sleep with your best friend we're still gonna have a pool party and wake up with massive regrets yeah, yeah. it's interesting to see how that will shake out i do think like in my opinion that is something tom should be mad at his friend about he yeah. has no place being Katie can do whatever she wants. Katie who he's been divorced with forever yep. who she said not in the friend group and that was the whole impetus yeah. of the drama with Raquel last season before Scandaval erupted yeah. so uh, so if he even confronts Katie about it it's like bro talk to your friend yeah, yeah. like it what do you what are you talking about if if like a friend of mine slept with an ex I wouldn't be like well I mean loyalty it's like no we've been broken up what are you yeah. talking about yeah I have no loyalty yeah she can do whatever she wants, but it did Oy. seem like she did not want that brought up on camera. So she did not. She was she was actually gooped, gagged, gobsmacked. I'm like, oh, I know that face where you're like, I'll pretend I didn't hear it. Wait, what? <laughs> what? Wait, what? 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 <laughs> what are you talk? What are you talking about? Huh? Could you repeat like, it slower as I figure out what to say back to you? God, she's so lucky she doesn't get hives. I would have just been like. Pfft. Just like red everywhere. A dot for every lie. Okay, well, speaking of gooped, gob, gob smacked, we've got your first Bachelor finale, baby. Oh my God. So One, much. it was too long, but yeah. that's fine. I was just like, this is longer than a movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it took forever. It is definitely a slow roll. I have been saying it from the get go. I was team Kelsey, like even when it was like the yeah. last 10. So yeah. I, and I told you, I think she's funny on TikTok. And yeah. so I was really happy. I feel like they have like a really sweet connection. They I, seem genuinely when they mm -hmm. meet each other. I'm like, look at those cute little lovebirds. And I'm like, that's so sweet. It's really sweet. And yeah. I, I thought it was once again, she gets like steamrolled by all the families. I don't know if the families just like the, the Golden Bachelorettes. I don't know if they're just making it the story that Kelsey gets constantly told. Like, you know, you could get heartbroken. I know. I know they really Calm reality down. check her for some reason. Also, here's my question. Do they meet, do the two, last two girls meet the parents back to back like same day? Because that's crazy. Um, yes, they meet them back to back. And wow. my second question is, at any point, was it mentioned that like Joey's mom has like a speech thing or was she lit up on mimosas? I couldn't tell either. I Could did tell. at one point realize that she sounded like she was slurring and I was like, but I get it. 
This well, is a long ass weird day for you guys. <laughs> I didn't know if maybe she was a little drunk because um, and if there it's something else that I'm sorry if I sound insensitive, but yeah. like it cut to her at the live and she was watching herself going. Oh, really? Like she was like she was cringing at herself, oh. which could just be to see herself on camera. But it yeah. was truly like, oh, and then she also sounded more drunk during Kelsey, which was the second one of the day. That's a look. I caught it, too. And I wasn't sure. I was like, oh, does his mom have a speech impediment that I didn't recognize in the beginning? But yeah. or is this that's why I was like, is this back to back? And they're just like topping is. off their champagne for continuity. That's what I'm saying, because if my mom and sister had to meet someone on The Bachelor and they yeah. were given four mimosas. I'd be like you are meeting an interesting version of my family especially because she (laughs) told Daisy I'd be honored to have you as a daughter-in-law and that's when I was like oh shit is it gonna be Daisy whoa that's a crazy thing to start your day saying to a stranger no absolutely (laughs) I knew it wasn't going to be Daisy when they gave her that last date in a cave (laughs) I said they gave Daisy the spiritual experience and they gave Kelsey a spa day. Oh, they love Kelsey. <laughs> well, I was talking to someone about this the other day. I, I was talking to Kiwi and I was like, oh, yeah, the differences in the two dates. It's obvious like the front runner. However, a little food for thought is like definitely Daisy was like, I love this spiritual stuff. And yeah, like, she did that's, say she likes that stuff. That's why the producer did it. Granted, though, like there's a guy in a cave with you speaking not your first language. Yeah. And it's hot. And like if you already have anxiety and then you get put into a sauna, Ooh. all that. However, I like to think, who knows? We'll never know. I like to think that if it was reversed, yeah, Kelsey and him would have been laughing and having fun during it. Yes. So it really was the... It was not only the the vibe of the date, but also like the elephant in the room of how she was feeling. Yeah, but I did make a note that was like, whoa, this spiritual experience kind of worked because it did bring out the truth for Daisy as she started to realize like, one, look, uh, I was kind of like, Daisy's cool. I have no like nothing negative to say about her, but... I thought Kelsey was like more fit for him. But yeah. after this episode, wow, I have so much respect for Daisy. This like really blew my mind. This is, I just got cold chills. Yeah. This is the first time I've liked Daisy. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like I felt like she, because you showed me her old music video and people were speculating online too that like maybe she was there for like clout for her music or something. which Or to be what, Bachelorette, which now we know she wasn't. Which I have questions about, uh-huh. but... Uh, but I, but you only see her kind of like, I don't know. She didn't get to show a ton of personality. And Mm-mm. this whole episode, I was like, what a remarkable woman. Like, yeah. this is truly incredible. Both of them when they, oh my God, oh, the when door? they knocked on the door and the they do- hugged and they cried, Covered. I cried, I cried. I'm on this medication that makes me my hormones through the roof and i was like this is girlhood this is female friendship it, this is the stuff they only talk about in ooh. myths and dreams i'm truly i have cold chills on the top of my head it was such a while i will say the exact opposite about after the final rose rose <laughs> the finale itself i feel like was brilliant producing Oh, my God. I, the fake outs, the having them come together, the making sure. I mean, and even just the way that Daisy was vulnerable enough to yeah. go. Well, twofold the, the moments to go like, I know it's not me instead yeah. of just like, I never mind. I don't want it. You know what I mean? Yeah. For her to go like, I know it's not me and she's amazing and you oh. guys do it. And then the fucking <laughs> heart oh. wrencher in the car of. If I can love someone that much who's yeah. not right, imagine how much I can love someone who ain't, who is. Or I whatever thought, the version of it was. If I, I can was love like, the wrong person wrong guy, this much, yes. imagine how much I can love the right person. I was I'm, like, oh, she just came up with her own Bachelorette trailer in real time. <laughs> I was like, that's an incredible line. And mm-hmm. wow. But her, because when she started to ask Kelsey... Like, how was your last date? I was like, is this normal? Is it, do no. they do this? No, but you, I mean, it, that's the thing is I wonder in the same way when we talked about like the, 
the women tell all how yeah. everyone was like making up and Maria was hugging people and and they talked about like maybe don't be such assholes to them on Twitter kind of yeah. thing. Um, besides racist, just people are mean. Yeah. Um, I wonder if it's kind of like <laughs> Bachelor in the Barbie era where it's like if yeah. someone's like, I want to talk to them. This is yeah. my friend. Yes. You know, like as much as they are my competition. Yes. I thought it was so wise of them to do that and not just keep them like caged animals. Yes, I thought it was so great. The thing that I do hate that they still do is make them walk the longest distance possible to get to Joey at the end of the, like when they were driving up in the car and then Daisy got out first yeah. and like he sees her. I was like, she has to walk like half a mile so, now. <laughs> and that dress was constricting. I, she looked amazing in that dress. That red dress was stunning. Also, Wow, Kelsey going with a white dress. I don't know whose choice it is, like I hers know. or producers, but that is like, damn girl. Everyone's like, that's winner behavior. <laughs> However, I'm like so wild that even if I was Kelsey and the other person was like, and I think Joey comforted her in all the right ways. Like, he's so sweet. Like, what a good bachelor. He truly is the best bachelor of all time. Like, True. so I mean, emotionally what? available and and mature. Emotionally mature to a degree that is um like unprecedented oh it was so sweet but f if i was kelsey even if literally joey had comforted me and daisy comes and is like ours wasn't like that i yeah. think it's you and we're riding together and i know that like daisy is going to be dumped slash leave and yeah. i'm gonna go get engaged i would still be like he wanted Daisy and he's going to be so heartbroken for this that they just tell me to stay in the car and drive off or just yeah. be like, uh, you know what I mean? Like I would still be like, oh, this is going to make me being rejected even worse. Well, that's <laughs> I, I was like making notes throughout it, remembering like, how could she ever trust him after this? <laughs> like he truly Literally. and like they had the Daisy and him had, wow, the most mature breakup I think I've ever experienced between mm -hmm. two young adults and for that to happen I would be like oh shit maybe he loves her more now because she's so mature about all of this and what oh if that's God. like super attractive to him and I seem like a big old baby <laughs> but no Joey <laughs> oh my god her walking Daisy walking back and then hugging Kelsey and being like, your mom would be so proud I of you. I can't. Daisy, are you kidding me? I can't. God. Like, when she did that, it, did, it didn't make me go, I want her to be the bachelorette. I still was like, I still wanted it to be Maria. It didn't make yeah. me go like, that's the next bachelorette. It made me go, will you host instead of Jesse Palmer? That's what like, I was like. Yeah, same. I was like. That is emotional intelligence. That mm -hmm. is maturity. That is a deep level of female respect and yeah. an, an ability to step outside of yourself and the circumstances and to see your experience for what it is rather than the narrow lens that you're experiencing it through. Like that is some true leveled up self-work shit that she. Agreed. And you know, like it's not lost on me that realizing you're about to be dumped yeah and getting ahead of that yeah and yeah. saying it it also saves space for you but but she clearly cared enough about these two people and especially joey to go like yeah. i'm not gonna even make you dump me like have a good time yeah however there is there was one side by side grace it killed me so badly <laughs> of when joey's like like trying to keep in his crying so hardcore <laughs> it was matched up the side have you ever seen that picture of a dachshund who got stung by a bee yes yes <laughs> <laughs> and it, it killed me oh my god i yes, think i can see it it was an incredible finale i know when they oh. always say like this is a finale like you've never seen i was like I you really know what it. it actually was yeah. in, the, in the millions of seasons they have this is the first time i've ever seen this i feel privileged uh to mm -hmm. watch this as my first real full season of the bachelor even the post dump conversation that yeah. um daisy and joey had on the couch in front of everyone was the most mature conversation i've ever heard them just thanking each other back and forth back and forth back and forth i was like can we wrap this up a little bit you I have get no it. idea like <laughs> there have been 
I think three seasons, Grace, yeah. where like and one of the early ones where by the time it's after the final rose, yeah, they admit like we broke up because I realized I chose the wrong person. And that yeah. person just I mean, like per, truly there was one wow. where they showed the breakup. They were like the the bachelor. His name was oh god, he was like a race car driver. I forgot. Wait, his was name. this the Ari season? Yes, Ari. That's where, the one I did see. That's why that guy was such a doof to me. No, such no, a doof, but no shade. But now either. him and the other woman, they yeah. have two kids. They're uh, like, yeah. And then the other one that that happened with, which she was like told on air, where yeah. he was like, I made a mistake, and so she was like. What? Because here she had been living for four months being like, well, they're happily engaged. And he was like, I broke up with her. I made a mistake. Oh my Did God. it on the show. They oh have God. multiple kids and have been married ever since. Jeez Louise. Anyway, so like there has been some drama. So for this, it truly felt like I was watching like a ladies luncheon. Yeah. Everyone was so excited to see each other. And I will say this. Yeah. Whatever Daisy's doing, she's never looked better. Did she get it? I'm, who cares what work she might have gotten done? She got at first I was like, snatched. her face... Her face looks different, but I was like, she looks stunning. Uh, she maybe looks, this is what emotional maturity does to a, a human. Well, she <laughs> Whatever looks it was, stunning. she looked fantastic. She looked snatched. She looked stunning. She looked great. But also, um, I wonder, I feel like on The Actual Bachelor, just for like cost and budget, like yeah. they do their own hair and makeup. I think this is the first time we've seen Daisy with oh. professional hair and makeup. Wow. I didn't know that they did their own hair and makeup. They always look so good. They, they don't have time. Be, they don't they have time to doing. like. Yeah. I'm sure they have people there to be like, honey, this is fucked up. Like they're not yeah. going to have them go out. But I think, you know, you can't do like 12 people's hair and makeup every time and take two hours. I think it's yeah. on them. Yeah, that so. makes sense. Anyway, um, uh, The Bachelorette. OK, well, before just really quick, oh, I want to message Kelsey's dad in the audience. Oh, hubba, da, 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 damn. If he and then Jesse was like, we'll probably be hearing from you later. Like, I don't know if they're going to give him Golden Bachelor because we have the Golden Bachelorette first. I think he right. might be a contestant on it. <gasps> that would be interesting. OK, you well, know, her dad seems lovely. And we haven't um, announced who the Golden Bachelorette is either. Oh, is that's going to be ask. the dance teacher mm. who got dumped like. Leslie? Are they going to bring back bitter Leslie? <laughs> Are they going to bring back Leslie? <laughs> oh, no, she's great. She calls it like she's experienced it. Is Leslie uh, going to be uh, Kelsey's new stepmom after she was like, this process <laughs> you're gonna, yeah, is be. terrible. It's like, thanks, you're my new stepmom? Great. Um, but okay, I cut you off. We're in now Bachelorette territory. I am shook. Me too wasn't expecting that i'll tell you that much i am excited you know yeah. to have the first asian american i don't want to take away from that bachelorette oh, is she? she's the first one. Oh wow congrats jen yeah so this is that's like historic and she's a sweetheart and you know i think she's great she's great it's just that maria I was know. so is such a fucking powerhouse such a wild card too and then seeing I was so like, I don't want Daisy. And then seeing the finale with Daisy, I was like, I still mm. want Maria, but like, I now know you could hold your fucking own. Yeah, wait, okay. Here's my question. I remember yeah. th that I forgot that. Um, so when they brought Daisy out, they were they setting up the premise that she turned down the Bachelorette because she's not ready to go on this experience again, which is again perfectly in line from being the most mature person. <laughs> yeah, and maybe you're like, look, I've just had my hearing. Maybe right. I should like ha go on some actual dates that aren't produced on television. Yes, a hundred percent. And also, people noticed too um, at after the final rose, her voice had changed. That's what I noticed too. But because I guess she's that's part used of it. to her, she can talk now. Like she yeah. can like she can hear sure. herself talk better and like has gotten used to it. Like yeah. you know they like showed her getting it and it was like she goes, I sound like an alien. Like she yeah. can learn to manipulate her voice more. Um, so anyway, but wait, so she. Th that she came out and they were basically like so why did you turn down the bachelorette is that what it, was happening i think in so many words i think okay. i think the producers wanted her apparently again not confirmation apparently she and maria both turned it down oh maria turned it down that is the word on the street Ooh. and maybe that is absolutely false maybe hmm. just daisy did and then like jen was next up and maria but, was like i turned it down too <laughs> 
<laughs> However, some people like everyone is going, oh, it's the Tyler Cameron route. Like they didn't give it to Tyler Cameron. And then mm-hmm. he like did his own thing and started dating like Gigi Hadid. And like, you know, do and so people okay. are like, everyone's like, Maria's too good to waste her time with like the guys who are going to be on The Bachelorette. Like she's going to go date a fucking celebrity. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, the, wasn't that the rumor that she's dated a member of One Direction too? Uh, I know that past, she was a super fan. I don't know if there was any actual dating. I think she yeah. was like a stalker. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's made an impression on Bachelor Nation. I mean, she's got to be probably in paradise, right? At least. You know what? Usually they. Oh, man. I feel like paradise has to be coming up pretty soon of who they announce is going to be on it. And I'm only going to know people from this season. Right. I'm not going to know any of the guys. Yeah. <gasps> I mean, I won't know at all, but I feel like I feel like she might have turned it down. I'm so speculating yeah. to be on paradise instead because it's more fun. Who knows? Ooh, I don't know. Look, we're in the universe again. We've got Goldens. We've got yeah. Regulars. We've got Paradise. This is... I'm, I'm orbiting in this universe. There's a lot going on. Honestly, I am really excited for Jen. I think she Me was too. super fun, super charming, and like down for whatever. I also think that she's the kind of woman that like all, all of the men will fall in love with. You yeah. know, like oh, they don't have to gorgeous. worry about like connections. Like she's so likable that mm-hmm. like yeah it won't be an issue totally oh my goodness Whew. here we are again me saying grace let's make this a quickie rounding out on an hour we got thoughts we got thoughts we got so many thoughts wow. um okay so here's i mean drag- so bachelor we don't have Bachelor's next time. week then okay so i think we need to and you guys tweeted us dm us do all the things of what's coming up that we should mm-hmm. start to cycle in. I mean, I think we're still good with like Drag Race, the pump survivor right now. We're getting into yeah. the nitty gritty um, or else these these are going to be an hour and a half long. Right. Um, and But like what is coming up? Yeah, let us know is... what's coming up because also we have like I haven't watched Love is Blind. Crazy. The most recent season. I know. I just now don't have the news. time. Now it's old news. T- I know. That's the bummer too is that like I just don't have the time to <laughs> what don't you have time to dedicate <laughs> to binging i you know i want to though who has um, the time you're just doing a seinfeld <laughs> yeah she's, uh, um but yeah let us know what else is coming up I, I i forget we've been in this for a while yeah what if daisy turned it down to do a netflix show called love is deaf i'm just saying i'm it's, just saying you know now we're wildly speculating <laughs> Things that have no basis in reality. None at all. Well, a girl can dream, okay? Yeah. Oh, this got real. Yep.